You, you refer to social media, just to one word, one yes or no. Would you consider uh, legislation to remove a right to anonymity on social media? Well, I, I, I want us to look at everything, and there is work taking place already. We've got an online harms bill that will come to Parliament. There's work taking place on it right now. I've done a lot of work on these social media platforms, mainly around encryption and areas of that nature. But we can't carry on like this. I, I spend too much time actually with communities who have been under attack, basically, um, who've had all sorts of postings put online. And it's a struggle to get those postings taken down. We want to, we want to make some big changes on that. Where we see quite a lot of what you've just been talking about is on social media. And the Home Secretary seemed to hold open the possibility that the uh, right to anonymity, which currently exists on social media, uh, may not be sacrosanct. Would, would you support the idea that anonymity uh, be, is removed from people who post on social media platforms? I think the difficulty with removing anonymity altogether is that you've got pro-democracy protesters and campaigners, you've got um, whistleblowers, people around the world who sometimes have to use some level of anonymity in order to make themselves heard. And so the debate that we've been having in Parliament through the online safety bill is about how you get that balance right. There are limits, perhaps, that you can put on anonymous accounts for what they're able to do and how they're able to interact with other people online and there have to be, surely there has to be repercussions for people engaging in what would be criminal behaviour if it happened in person but doing so online whether they're anonymous or otherwise. I have to say I listened to Priti Patel talking about online safety and you know I know that she gets a lot of abuse on social media as well and I'm extremely sympathetic but it is a bit rich for the Home Secretary to say that she takes that very seriously when the government have been dragging their feet on this legislation for years and currently we're at a situation where they're not proposing that there'll be any penalties for top executives of tech companies who don't abide by the online proposed code. If there are repeated breaches so, of that code, if they're not upholding their responsibilities, there ought to be penalties for that. We can't continue with a situation in which Diane Abbott once described as the Wild West, okay. where some people are targeted so severely that it does impact on their ability to speak out, not just MPs, but you know, young people particularly voice those concerns as well, many of them driven off line so, by the amount of hate that is on there. So on social media, you would be open to some limits on anonymity and also uh, new penalties for the social media platforms. Yes, and we've, we've got to, you know, as I say, we've got to get the balance right because social media can be an enormous force for good. I see it very much in the course of my day job where you've got some incredible... Um, campaigners, the women of Belarus, the pro-democracy protesters mm. in Hong Kong, the young people of Afghanistan, they've managed to use social media in order to make themselves heard. And if you speak to Childline, they'll say that social media has been a, a major problem for a lot of young people, but it's also been a way in which young people can now reach out and get help in a way that they couldn't yeah. when I was a child. So we've got to get the balance right to make sure that we use this as a force for good in every era where we've been through technological revolutions. That's always been the case. The one thing I do agree with Priti Patel about is that I really don't think that we've got to grips with this yet. We haven't worked out how to manage it so that it works in the interests of democracy rather than working against it. So specifically, there will be threats uh, uh, made against you online, physically, after this interview. Do you think the social media companies have the obligation and should be forced to publish the names um, of anonymous people attacking public figures like that? So I, I think that people have to be held to account for what would be criminal behaviour in the real world if they indulge in it online. But I'm a bit cautious, we're a bit cautious, about just simply ending anonymity um, on social media. I work with a lot of uh, people, whether it's the women of Belarus or the pro-democracy campaigners in Hong Kong, 
um, yeah. whistleblowers as well, people who, for whom anonymity on social media can be life-saving. So the, the trick is to get the right balance. That's what we've been trying to do through the online safety bill. The government has dragged its feet on this for years. Mm. But the one thing that we really think there must be is that when we introduce a code for how social media companies should respond to online hatred on their sites, if they repeatedly breach that code or don't uphold it, we think there should be penalties for top executives. The government doesn't agree. We think that's completely wrong. The, Diane Abbott once described what goes on online as the Wild West. And for a lot of people, it does very much feel like that. Yeah. It's not just MPs. It's young people who are being driven offline because of the amount of hatred directed to, towards them at a really formative moment in their lives. We're, we're supposed mm. to be one of the b okay. best democracies in the world. We used to export our democracy all yeah. over the world. If we're going to lecture other countries about upholding democracy, we need to start doing better at li living that and upholding these values at I was talking to Lisa Nandi um, about the huge amount of abuse that MPs, but particularly women MPs and perhaps particularly women MPs of colour are getting at the moment. Some of it very, very vile and violent and personal. And whether or not social media companies should be obliged to make public the anonymous um, uh, identities behind which some of these attacks happen. So. Um this isn't new, let me be no, clear about sure. that. I've been a Member of Parliament for St Thomas Lisa actually, around 11 years. Um, I can say this as someone that has been subject to a lot of abuse over a consistent period of time. Did you but, feel unsafe before? I mean, Home Secretary, you get protection as Home Secretary. Yes. Where, as an ordinary MP, did you feel unsafe? I've always been conscientious about safety and my security because I've been subject to abuse from the first day I became a Member of Parliament. There are people that have been subject to police action, not just cautions, but have gone to court because of the abuse that has come my way. I don't think that is, I just don't think abuse in public life from people, anonymous individuals and even individuals that the police find is acceptable. We're, we're public, we're elected politicians. We come into public life to be a force for good effectively, to serve our constituents, to serve our country. But you've asked the question About anonymity. around anonymity. There is legislation underway led by Department of Culture, Media and Sport, technology companies. I do a lot in the security space around online encryption. Believe you me, I am absolutely vigorous in my challenges to Facebook, to Twitter and to the CSPs, the providers, and we will continue to be so. There is this whole issue about anonymity, but it has to be proportionate and it has to be balanced. People also use media, social media, for, through anonymity for a range of pro-democracy movements, for example, and mm. raising a range of other cases. So, you have so to be we, we can't just apply you know, a binary approach, but there is something very, very corrosive. I mean, I, I, will, I will put Look, aside, just, just, I will put forward my own personal views right now. What we see on social media, much of it, and this isn't just about MPs at all, Andrew, I've seen children subject to the most appalling, um, appalling um, hate and abuse online. We know that social media platforms advocate all sorts of things that are harmful to, to all, all aspects of society. This is why the online harms bill is so important. And that is why I would say that, if nothing else, this is one area where all politicians can come together to really close that corrosive space where we see just dreadful mm. behaviour, hate. We see suicide websites. We see all sorts of corrosive things online. This is what we really want to close down. So there's a lot more to do.